Hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Am I going to keep this Akai Force? Mm, I have no idea, but um, until I decide, full speed ahead. Now, one of the things about the Akai Force um, is the auto sampler. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm most excited about because I used to use this auto sampler all the time when I had the MPC Live in 2018. So I'm talking about like when the when the Live first came out about. Um, I, I owned one and I, I used the auto sample feature all the time on there, right? And it's astounding to me, even longtime Force and, and MPC users that I know, maybe a dozen, uh, nobody uses this, nobody even thinks about it, right? And I've often said that just this feature alone is worth the cost of these machines, okay? Now, what the auto sample, what the auto sampler does is it basically, uh, you hook the MIDI out, from your force to the MIDI in of your favorite synthesizer or software synthesizer and you send the sound back into the force or the MPC and you set various parameters for sending MIDI notes out and it automatically sends out MIDI notes and records each one of the notes as they come in and creates multi samples from scratch with really just the click of a button right so let me show you how I set this up and let's uh, make some multi samples of my favorite software instruments Okay, so let's load up a new project and uh, go to empty projects. There's a few things you got to do before you can do this. Um, one is you have to have the MIDI out from the force or the MPC one or, or any MPC going into uh, your synthesizer, the MIDI in of your synth. In this case, it's the uh, interface uh, that uh, I use, my MIDI and audio interface for Ableton Live. And then you have to have the audio going into the unit, okay? So basically, it can send out MIDI notes and record the notes as the audio comes back into the unit, okay? So here's how you want to set this up, all right? First thing you want to do is add a track. You want to add MIDI, okay? And um, then you want to double tap that guy there to give you... Basically, it'll say, see, it says MIDI out port port. None. I don't know why the default is none. There's probably a way to make it, but we're going to use the force. Woohoo! Okay? Then... We're going to go in here to the menu and we're going to go to the sampler and we're going to turn the sound on, okay? Now, with the sound coming through, um, then you, you can set the trim levels with the with the trim knobs in the back or whatever, or your sound source. You want to get it nice and hot, though. Get good, you know, uh, loud signal without clipping. Okay, so now we have my favorite software instrument. Uh, this is Reactor 6 with the laser bass and a patch called The Sauce, which is very fitting. This is what it sounds like. Okay, and now we're going to make a multi-sample inside the Akai Force. Okay, so now in the Akai, because this is a MIDI... Um, a MIDI, MIDI track, you can't hear this because of the way I have to have it set up. I can't have it the sound from here going into the uh, interface while the interface is coming back in or have a terrible feedback loop. But trust me, you can hear the so uh, software instrument, okay, because it's MIDI. So here's what you do. You go into Auto Sample. Now, one of the things that I'm not liking about the Akai Force is that as I'm scrolling, I... <laughs> actually am turning on and off things, right? Okay, right now we are going to turn off this extend uh, mi minimum and maximum notes, okay? Because we're not going to extend, we're going to be exact. The minimum note we're going to sample from the software, from Reactor, is C1, okay? Because that's as low as I want it. And the max note is C4, that's fine. We could go all the way down to C-1 and uh, record... Um, notes all the way up to G8, right? That's a full that that's the full MIDI uh, um, uh, note architecture. Nonetheless, we're going to keep it here. Okay. Now it says note stride six. I don't know if you can read this or not. I hope so. But it says note stride six. And what that means is that on a keyboard, it's going to sample every sixth note. Okay. That's not good enough for me. I'm going to sample every three. Okay. Now, in here. Um, you'll see that it also has the op uh, opportunity to record four layers of velocity, okay? 
So it will take, <laughs> in this instance, if I had all four checked, you can see the little graphs on here. Um, that each one represents a little bit greater velocity and what it would do is it would record every three notes and also would record record four copies of that note at different velocity right now for this demonstration we don't need to do that so we're just going to go forward um, note length three seconds we don't really need three seconds of this um, I'm going to dial that back to about 1900 the tail here is uh, one one second of tail okay um, we're gonna call this uh, reactor sauce bay bass sauce bass okay now it's automatically gonna loop this you can turn this loop off but actually it's not a bad idea to have some some loop with this patch so I'm gonna pull the loop end back a little because I'm only recording 19 100 milliseconds, 1.9 seconds. So we'll go to 1.9 seconds on the loop length as well. Now, I'm going to turn the crossfade on so that at the loop point, there's not a bit of, uh, of, of clicking. Okay, I'm going to use three samples of crossfade. I can go uh, four samples of crossfade. Auto trim the start. Yeah, might as well. And we're going to make it the current track. Now, if I go down here, it's telling me that this session is going to be 34 seconds. Okay, to do this. That's not very long. Okay. Sometimes if I'm recording every note, for instance, and I'm doing four layers of velocity and the note length is five or six seconds, like big pads or something like Korg Wave Station, um, it might take five or six minutes. And then you just go get a coffee and you come back and it's done. But right now, I'm going to hit this and it's going to start working. Now, I can hear this in my headphones. You guys can't hear that, but it's recording all the notes. Okay, I'll be back in a second and I'll show you how, how it looks. All right, now we have these uh, multi samples. Listen. Okay, now th since it's a bass line, there's a few things I want to do. For one thing, notice that it has no release. If I want to give it a little release, all right, you can find envelopes for these sort of things. Um, if you go into the menu and you go to track edit, uh, here, let's uh, make this mono. All right in the global section mono instead of poly because it's a bass line so I don't want more than one firing off at the same time then I can go to envelopes now up here it says that I have 13 key groups that we recorded okay and it says uh, that we're in key group 12 the last one you touch is the one that it goes to but you can click on that and dial it back to key group all and we can just uh, mess with the release until we like it Let's hear what this loop point sounded like. Okay, uh, maybe if you want it to be less abrupt, then use a larger uh, amount of samples in the crossfade when you're setting this up, okay? So that's what it sounds like. Now I'm gonna show you something a bit more advanced. Okay, here we are back in Ableton, and on track number two here, instead of using uh, reactor like we did a second ago or any other software synthesizer to create a multi-sample. This time we're going to do something way more advanced and in, in track two here and I have this arms um, when I hit the MIDI over here on the, the Akai, listen. All right, what it's giving me is this drum rack that I built, right? It's triggering off this drum rack. Now here's the thing about the drum rack, okay? I have two separate drum racks. One is this first one and uh, what I did was, I will uh, solo this so you can hear it. It is the entire thing from top to bottom here. All of this, right, um, which is 128 notes or more actually because it, uh, it goes from negative C1, uh, excuse me, C negative 2 up to G8 like I was saying before. It's filled with heavy drum hits, okay? And then this other one here is all sci-fi samples. Listen. Now. Nice, right? And what it sounds like together is this. All right? Now, 
interesting thing is that um, you don't, especially with these long sci-fi samples, I don't want those overlapping, right? When I'm when I'm playing them, I want them to uh, to cut each other off. So in the choke groups over here, what I've done is I've collected all of them, right? I've uh, hit the top one. You can hit Control A, and it gives you all of them. And then I've changed it to choke number one. Okay, so these are all on the same choke group. So not one of them is going to uh, to to play while the other one's playing. They they're all going to cut each other off. Now what I'm going to do. Okay, let's go back to the forest and set this thing up so that we can uh, record this entire rack of drums, meaning uh, in the increments, we're going to record every note and we're going to uh, not, it, they're going to be short, but we're going to create a huge drum rack. Let's go over to the forest. Okay, so we're, this was the reactor sauce we made. We're going to go back to that MIDI channel. Okay, now listen. Oh, amazing. That's our drums, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to sample, sampler. We're going to hit the auto sample feature. This time, we're going to reset everything, okay? Because we want the minimum note to be all the way down to C negative 2. We want the max note to be at G8. We want to record every note, okay? And we don't want any velocity. No big deal. Uh, the sampling note length, um, I'm going to bring that down a little bit further, maybe 1.2 seconds or 1.1 seconds. Um, we'll give it less of a tail, okay, because we don't need that. We'll call this industry, my kids are upstairs fighting in bed, sorry about that. Industry, dang, come on. U-S-T-R-Y, industry drums, okay? Do it. And then looping. We don't want looping for this piece. We want just one shots, right? Auto trim the start. Yeah, might as well make current track. Now, it's going to take 177 seconds, it's telling me, right? Um, that's okay. Let's just do this. Ready? Ah, you can hear it actually this time. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to let this finish up and then I'll show you what we got. All right, so here we are. So there you have it. That's how it's done. Um, yeah, go to uh, ghostwrittenclips.com. Links in the description. And uh, opt into my email list. And I'll send you these key groups. Um, even if you don't have an NPC or a force, I believe all the WAV files are present and you'll be able to use them in whatever sampler. But anyway, everybody be blessed. Um, yeah, I'll keep you updated as I, as I learn more about this machine.